No. Hmm. Oh, is it broadcasting across the whole room now? Whoa. Is that is that a thing? Yep, yeah, yeah, that's a thing now. Okay, you go. You uh, go. Is nope, that not you? that one. Is that one you? Uh, no, not that one. Uh, that one. Oh. Whoa. Whoa. Are we live right now? Oh, no. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say no, but we are. Okay. Oh, no, no. No sex education, please. Or oh, possibly... With this what? episode, it's just sex education, the review. This is just... No, 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 no. I did research today. Oh, my. Oh, sorry, everybody. Excuse me, my family deafens the world. Oh, that's okay. I'm too short to use this. <laughs> there we go. Oh, that nice little ring. Oh, that's a little... The ring around the room. You just... What about... No, it's just... My voice, my voice hits the pitch of the ring in the room, whatever uh, the ring may be. Wow, I hate that. Ba 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 She she messaged me good morning at the same time and I'm like, get it together, Emma. Her name is Emma and she's not listening to the show. Cheat better. <laughs> Cheat it. Right, the next ten seconds, I'm gonna carry on without you, Emma. Okay, she's typing she's typing too slowly. Shall we get on with it? Rob. Well, yes, it would be great if you would, well, would so look fine. away from your phone. <laughs> Okay, da, da, da. I have a intro bit for you the have first an intro. time in a week. <laughs> Yay! Uh, hang on, I've just realised that I've put this down in week seven and it's not, it's week eight. I forgot Matilda completely. <laughs> we have great love for Matilda. That was we do. Time, yeah. That that was not a good episode, though, let's no, be real. Really. <laughs> it was dull, I haven't put it up yet. That's how dull it was. Okay, she's still typing, so I'm assuming something's gone wrong. I'm not sure we're live. What? Check the website, I'll check the website. Mm, you check the website. Well, that's good. <laughs> to be fair, this hasn't been quality. Switched on the term, but still no sound. Mm. No, okay. Y'all are... Okay, idiots. <laughs> it is working, it is working. It is working. I'm just a joke. I just played it. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, but the silence was us listening <laughs> to me call them idiots again. <laughs> yeah. Yay! Okay, right. Emma's tuned in. How's Catherine doing? Yeah, Catherine, oh, we'll find out. Will you, she's lost. She's also, she's also working. Okay, so right. <clears throat> William Wilberforce. Philip. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> the man. <laughs> Shut up. The man famous in the United Kingdom and possibly even beyond, I don't know how famous yeah, he is, I have to be honest, um, for fighting tirelessly for the abolishment of the slave trade within Britain. Arguably one of the kindest and most fondly remembered British political figures. Join Robert and I for a quick dive into the man behind the speeches. If you haven't already suffered through the Yoan Grufford and Benedict Cumberbatch 2006 biopic, that is. Did you ever watch that? I forgot they made that. Yeah. I almost bought it last night so I could rewatch it, and I was like, "I'm very tired." I think I saw it. It was a, it was a thing. It was a thing. Is that the one where he was chopping wood? Yes. There was a whole scene where he was like chopping wood, and then he like put the axe down, like, "I'm so tired <laughs> of slavery." <laughs> <laughs> There's a scene where the wife runs out when she's pregnant and collapses yeah, for some reason. No, I can't remember why. <laughs> people in Victorian times collapsed more often than we do. Female hysteria. Females just. Oh, that ringing noise is so annoying. It's very irritating. It's, it's like they put house. this in above us, and ever since they've done that, I don't know why they it's did just, it. there's just this ringing noise. And it doesn't matter how quiet I make it, it's just the ringing noise changes like, volume with the microphone. It's slightly better there. So if I, if I turn off the microphone, then yeah, the, the ringing the noise will be gone. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so um, <clears throat> I actually quite liked Amazing Grace, not going to lie. Amazing Grace. You know, That's apparently in America you're not allowed to sing. I think in America you're not allowed to sing that song if Why? you're white. Why? Because it's like Spring Nation Chariot. You're not allowed to sing that in America if you're white. If I remember rightly. Either way, that was a scene. That was a joke in Scrubs. Yeah. Where like Elliot was singing Swing Low Swing Chariot and Carla was like, "You're not allowed to sing that song." And I think it might be a thing. It's not a thing here. No. 
nice song here. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're allowed to sing them, which I, I mean, I get why you're not in America. <laughs> I mean, it was us doing the sleeving at that time, so realistically, if anyone's not allowed to sing yeah. it. Yeah. So, like, my mum's just pointing out, didn't they make you watch that at school? And I'm like, yeah, they did. I was made That's to why, watch it yeah. At school, yeah. Yeah, it was part of the curriculum. Um, anyway, Can you imagine making a movie? Emma says there's no ringing noise, so sorry, Rob. I'm going to have to turn it up slightly so the volume is fine. We may have to suffer through a slight ringing noise, but apparently you cannot hear that. I'm going to be entirely deaf by the end of this episode. Yeah. Are you even speaking into the microphone? Yes. No. Yes. <laughs> Which one's yours? I don't think yours is up enough. Talk again. Amazing okay. Yeah. Grace. So if there's any Americans listening, which I doubt, like... I somehow doubt it's, it. It's socially acceptable for us to sing those songs. Yeah, that's allowed. <laughs> so that's allowed. They in, do it in, in the like, UK. primary schools and stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 a, it's one of those big ones. Anyway, um, oh, mum says volume is also fine. Look, look, Emma. <laughs> Emma is terrible. I'm trying. <laughs> okay. Don't we... make me sing Amazing Grace again. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we get down to the... Let's do some stuff. <laughs> Facts. Um, I, I decided not to talk about slavery that much. I think that's for we the We all best. know why. Yeah. It's hard to have a... It's a bit like the um, Jean-Baptiste Belly one. It's, it's hard to make jokes about... Slavery. Slavery. Yeah. And I think that's for the best that we don't try. <laughs> and then we oppressed them. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. And I think it's a good thing it doesn't work. Yeah. <laughs> we should stop talking about it. Amazing um, <laughs> stop. But that's what he's famous for. Uh, is Yeah. Even though he... I was doing some research. He wasn't that involved. Did you know? I did. I kind of knew this. I kind of knew that he we, was... We, like... Yeah, we put it all on him. Yeah, I was... He did very little. <laughs> so, you know that, like... It's that whole thing of, bit, like, the one MP that happens to bring forward a bill. <laughs> yeah. And he's just like, he did it entirely him. But, like, I... He didn't really... It, this is... I was reading. Apparently, like, most of the abolition bills were, like, um... Talking about the the like the the good things that abolishment would make but not about actually abolishing it, <laughs> it was like he was it was real weird anyway it, what it's a, whack he's a weird but man. he's a he is a nice man i think he's one of those people we can solidly say he sounds like a nice dude he was very conservative i will give he didn't really believe in women fighting for the abolishment of slave trade because women should be in the home but when we're working off we have limited 18th century yeah. men yeah. Okay. The 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 bar is low. Yeah. <laughs> and he seems he loved his wife very much, but I'm going to get to that in a minute. Brilliant. Anyway, first fact. My glasses. I feel like this is the Lennon episode again where I actually know stuff. Facts. <laughs> Facts. Okay. Um. Okay. What do you think? Okay. Let's start. Do you know where Wilberforce was from? North. Was north. north. Where north? Yorkshire. It was Yorkshire. Yeah. Where in Yorkshire? Hull. <laughs> Hull? <laughs> Hull? It's Hull he's from York- Hull? Yeah. yeah, he's from Hull. He's Hull in Yorkshire. I think so. Either way, he went to school at Hull. He was Crazy. definitely born in Yorkshire. Or was he MP for Hull? I forget. Facts. That's he is po- linked to Hull. No <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. Watch me get the Wikipedia page back up. I have discovered that Hull is... Hull, Yorkshire. Hull is in Yorkshire. So... Okay, technically he's a native of Kingston upon Hull, but that's got to be like, close to Hull, right? Like the fancy bit. Isn't yeah, it? yeah. Uh, he's very okay. So what? He's very rich, basically. Yes. His, 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 he had a complicated family life that so I'm, I'm not really going to go into unless you want to. Yeah, he he liked his aunt and uncle, didn't like his parents and grandparents because his aunt and uncle were evangelists, right? And they heavily influenced him in his childhood, and his um. Parents and grandparents were Church of England, Anglican. Um, and so his parents and grandparents banned him from talking to his aunt and uncle because they were evangelists. <laughs> Savage. Um, anyway, so he had a difficult childhood, but then his grandfather and I think father died and he got all the inheritance. Oh, He's quite lit. a wealthy boy. So where do you think he went to university? Oxford. Close. Cambridge. Cambridge, yeah, yeah. I believe. Uh, now I'm just fact-checking because you said Oxford and I'm like, oh, no. Even though I know he went to Cambridge. <laughs> <laughs> but I doubt myself. Doo-doo. Yeah, Cambridge. Cambridge. What college? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Trinity. <laughs> no, That's same. Oxford. <laughs> famous <laughs> one. Um, Actually, it's not the famous one. I've, I've gone blank on I'm thinking of King's College, college Cambridge, but yeah. no, it's, it's St. John's Cambridge. St. <laughs> John's Cambridge. Which isn't as famous as King's College Cambridge. It's quite the alumni, isn't it? This is like when we say we're from King's College, and yeah. people are like, wow. Yeah, wow. <laughs> yeah, Don't London. correct 
Anyway. Oxford Brooks, Oxford Brooks. <laughs> <laughs> you know, anyway. Um, <laughs> let's not, let's not <laughs> get down to daddy. So what do you think he was like at university? What's the image of William Wilberforce that you have in your mind? I think he played lacrosse. So posh? I think he was, uh, I think he went to sports night uh, in the 1700s. Do you? Did they have sports night in the 1700s? Uh, well, before I answer that question... <laughs> So what sort of student are you thinking? I'm, I imagine that actually it's going to be one of those things where actually he was a terrible student and everyone was like, he's a dumbass. <laughs> well, you're half right. Did he go to sports night? Is that- he, <laughs> well, <laughs> so, so I think we all have this image. Well, I mean, if you don't know who William Wilberforce is, then you, you don't. have no image. But generally we remember him when he was in his 40s, 50s yeah. and he'd had this evangelical conversion. And he was a very conservative, sensible older man. Yes. You know, like your nice grandpa, who may be okay, is a little bit sexist sometimes, it's but right means place. well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's like, of course my wife shouldn't have to work. That kind of man. Like, not that she's not able to work, but she shouldn't, shouldn't have, have to. to. <laughs> that kind of, that kind of vibe. Well meaning, but, but wrong. But wrong. Um, <laughs> well meaning, but wrong. But anyway, we have this image of him, and actually, apparently, in his school days, he was a bit of a lad. A lad. Sports nights! Sports nights! <laughs> but they didn't have sports nights, but apparently he used to play cards and get drunk and stuff. Yeah. Uh, but he did disagree with... He said... It said he disagreed with the excess of some of his contemporaries. So he wasn't going hard okay. all the time. Hang on a minute. Did he disagree with some of the excess of his contemporaries? While he was drinking? Yeah. Or at the age of 50? No, no, he while like, he was drinking. I disagreed with the excess. He was of like, some of them are too, going too hard. Some of them are there smoking opium. But apparently he didn't really work very hard at all. But he still managed to get his BA and MA. It was but, easier in the past. What did he well, get his degree in? I guess he had money. Ooh, do you do why would you ask me this stuff question? at that time? I don't know. Why would you ask me this? I need to know. BA. Uh... It doesn't say. It might just be that it may be, but in that time where you just get the degree. From I think Oxford. he just got the degree. That's so. That's lit. It was so easy to get the degree. Yeah, he got a master's of arts and a bachelor of arts. Cool. We did history, kind of. It's yeah. It's okay. I tried to look it up for you just now, and it got real confusing in Oxbridge, and I was like, never mind. <laughs> Because they were like, it's actually not a degree, but a title that you earn after seven years after being... And I was like, okay, that's too much. That's too hard. You're going too hard. Sometimes I think the colleges need to stop. <laughs> I don't like Oxbridge. I don't like Oxford very much at all. I shouldn't say that. <laughs> I'm no not going go, to go. So <laughs> <laughs> no one will ever hear this. No one will ever hear this when I'm applying for my PhD. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah. Uh, so guess who he met in his party days? Lenin. Lenny, you idiot. <laughs> Don't be a fool. I've connected the dots. <laughs> you haven't connected blank, because I um, can't swear on oh, this. Yes. Um, is it another famous politician? It is another famous is politician. Is it one of the pits? It is. is Can it you remember which pit? The younger. It is. Yeah, it's the Who was he played by in the movie? Oh, I don't know. I've forgotten. Benedict anyway, Cumberbatch. Oh, is that Benedict Cumberbatch? Benedict Cumberbatch. Which I think it's his first was, movie. Uh Yoan Griff- Griffith. Uh, Yoan Griffith? Yoan Griffith? It's Welsh. Okay. I can't spell it. Uh, pronounce it. I O A N. Yoan, right? Yeah. And then Griffith, I think, because if you think of Cymru, the U is a Y sound. Yes. So G R U double F U D Griffith. Sounds right. Yoan Griffith. Welsh. I'm sure Emma will chime in to <laughs> in tell me if I'm wrong. <laughs> it's actually pronounced Steve. <laughs> yeah. You fool. <laughs> uh, anyway. Um, right. So, he did meet Pitt the Younger. This is all one fact, by the way. Yes. And um, what did Pitt the Younger convince him to do in his university days? Take it up the ass. <laughs> I'm so disappointed on Sorry, so many Emma. levels. <laughs> Sorry, Emma. Sorry, Catherine. Sorry, Casey on radio. <laughs> oh, my um, goodness. Is it just run for Parliament? Ah, she says... Joan Griffith. I don't think you're right, Mum. I don't think he it's Joan. Right. I think it's Joan. Jo- Joan. No, it's an I. It's an I, Mother. <laughs> Stop arguing I'm with Emma. I'm pretty sure over it's Joan. I'm gonna find. Right, I'll I give her Griffith. It. I think she's right with Griffith. 
I'm pretty sure it's not. Johan, yeah, thank you. Yeah, okay, I get it. You meant the J is in the, the, the German the J, the yeah. yeah. Got it. He's the same guy that played Mr. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah, he is, I know. That's crazy. Did you not know who no, I did Johan not, I have Griffith not. Johan Griffith has passed me by. Oh, he's, he's quite a sexy man, Johan Griffith. No. I'm quite attracted to Johan Griffith. He was she says of- was being Spanish. <laughs> I didn't take Spanish, Mom. <laughs> I took French, in which case it should be Joanne. <laughs> jo- Joanne. Joanne. Now uh, I'm just looking at the younger of his IMDb page. Anyway, yeah, no, he's, so he's, he's convinced by William Pitt the Younger to, to do, do something. something. Take um, a guess. And this is not that horrible <laughs> thing you said. Do not say it again. <laughs> my chin keeps hitting the... It's too low now. keep coming keep, into keep, it. Is keep um, bashing it with my um, chin. Um, is it, I don't know, is it politics related? It is. Is it get involved with the, I don't like slavery society? No. No. I don't know then. What was it? And become an MP. Oh, I said that. You did not say I that. I did say it. said run for parliament. You didn't. Play the footage. <laughs> I can't right now. <laughs> Emma will back me up. <laughs> Emma got real dis- disappointed that, and she was like, never mind, huh? And I was like, no, you did help. I just misunderstood. <laughs> I thought you were saying Joan Griffith. <laughs> and I was like, it's definitely not Joan. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, right. <clears throat> I've just noticed a typo on my notes. It's quite funny, but I would have thought it's Okay, we, are we, do you have anything to say about that? So he goes to university, meets someone who... Meets William Pitt the Younger, yep, who yep, is yep. the son of William Pitt the Elder, presumably. Mm-hmm. Oh, grandson, I think. Grandson. I think. That makes sense. There's a bit of an age gap between yeah. them, so it makes it. Yeah. I think he's so he's or presumably goes to it being like, I'm a be prime minister. And he meets Billip. And it's like. Why are you calling him Billip? Because it's funny. And <laughs> <laughs> it bothers me. And then, what? It's just like, you would make a good. And is he just going around saying anyone he likes, going, you would no, be I a good MP? I think they're lads. Are they lads together? Lads together. That's cute. Bros. I didn't realise they met at uni, I thought they met at Parliament. But no, they... they were I like the idea they hit Parliament Paris. together. Yeah. <laughs> uh, apparently he was paid £8,000 a year for being an MP, which in those days is... Uh, that's that's raking cash money. It in. That's cash money. Remember, Jane Austen fans, that Mr. Darcy only had 10000 a year and was considered rolling in it. So this is on top of his inheritance he's getting 8000 Whoa, he massively... He, he could have he, ended slavery he, on Yeah, party he boy. all of them. <laughs> oh, dear. Um... <clears throat> So let's move on. Moving on. <laughs> so, fact number two. Are you ready? Yes. Are you ready? Okay. You'll never get this. But guess what William Wilberforce did in 1793? Have breakfast. That can't be the right date. Well, it's unlikely to be 1893, is it? <laughs> I, I, that can't be. That can't be the correct date. I'm Ooh. just checking. Okay, myself. right. What is it? Oh, that a... well, thank God. Okay, 1783. 1783. Um... I, my little brain was doing overtime there. So, how old is he in 1783? He's 20 ish. When's he born? Why do you keep asking me all these questions? Come on. Uh, <laughs> um, he was. Oh, no, that's in office. I was like, he was three? <laughs> 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 no. He was. Uh, one would take it at 24. 24. Mm-hmm. He's one year before. Uh, Joe um, Keats died. Thanks, Rob. Which we now know. <laughs> yeah, that was savage. Keats died real he young. He died real young. Anyone know? Twenty-five years 25 old. Twenty-five years old. We were sat in a lecture, m- trying to listen and getting distracted, and the, the poor lecturer had 25. put that up That's on the, the screen. Like, you know, they know that poem that Keats wrote, which is like, "Oh, and he never finished it." No wonder you had about five <laughs> minutes. You know. <laughs> no. Um, God, l- l- imagine dying now, and everything you've produced is how people remember you. Yeah. The horror. Lame. People coming at my first year essays being like, this was his, I don't know, weird period where he didn't know how to write. And I was like, shut <laughs> up, guys. <laughs> okay, getting distracted. Uh, Emma so keeps what you... typing and then not sending, and it's really still, stressing me still out. Still going over the take it up the ass comment. Uh, um, <laughs> anyway, carry on. So he's been in office now for... Yeah. A little while. I think it's important. The reason it couldn't have been 1793 is because what happened in 1789, Robert? Off the top of my head, I don't know. What? 
<laughs> You're a history student. Can't remember. What, what? happened in 1789? <laughs> You're an early modern history student. Early you should modern know. ends in the like, 1750s. No, early modern ends in 1789. Why, Robert? Oh, Napoleon. No, not Napoleon. Fuck, I've forgotten. My brain's exploding. What is the it? The French Revolution. Oh, yeah, fuck it. Okay, ow, that physically hurt me. That's, that's, that's <laughs> painful. We'll cut that bit out. Rob has to leave Kings now. Rob's forgotten when the he French Revolution was. Degree. That's one of the Wait, days. Wait, hang on a minute. Did he go to France then? He did go to France. Did he hook up with On someone? a road that's, trip. On a lad's tour of lad's France. Lad's tour with William Pitt. You what? William <laughs> Pitt and him went on lad's yeah, yeah, tour yeah. of France. What was it called? It's the, called the Grand Tour, The Grand isn't it? Tour. He went, but he it wasn't really a Grand Tour. He just went to France. But he went on a road the trip. The point of a Grand Tour is that you go through Europe. That's what it's called. And he went with, with Pitt... And he went with Pitt's future brother-in-law, Edward Elliot. And they all went to Paris. And guess who they met in Paris? This is like the Hangover movie. Yeah, yeah. Guess who they met in Paris? It's a real crossover here. Lenin. No, not Lenin, for the love of God. Not Lenin. Lenin's <laughs> not born. <laughs> not Pete. Pete Carlo also not born. I she went to Paris. Lenin and Frida Carlo could maybe feasibly have run into each other. Uh, maybe. Maybe not. Maybe not. I think Frida Carlo slightly later. Yeah. But however, that would have been crazy. however, they could have done had she gone to Paris earlier and mm. he gone to Paris later. Anyway, they both hated Paris, if we remember rightly. We do. However, who do we think this trio of lads met in Paris <laughs> in 1783? No, I've got no more jokes. One year after Les Liaisons Dangereuses was written, if you're interested. I'm not. Well, now you know. Is it Robespierre? <laughs> Yeah, well, no, because let's be honest, he's not around yet, is no, he? No, true. The revolution is happened king? in. Does he go so, meet, does he go meet yes. Louis? Ah. So he meets Louis the Sixteenth. He meets Marie Antoinette, but, and then some wild cards. <laughs> Lafayette. What? <laughs> so, to those of you who don't know who Lafayette is, Rob, would you like to explain? He was the guy they sent over for the American Revolution. He yes, was the French aid man. Yes, and he met Lafayette. When's kind of, the French Revolution? 1776, isn't it? The French, American, the American, American Revolution, Revolution yeah. 1776. Okay, the, so he's already been and yeah. come back. And That's done. crazy. Can you imagine? Yeah, so... Can you imagine being like, this is Lafayette, he just freed America. Because let's be real, they're meeting all the conservatives here, aren't they? Is Lafayette one of the conservatives? Oh, no, wait. Lafayette fought against the English, didn't he? Yeah, but that was because he was fighting on behalf yeah, of the French crown. Yeah, on behalf crown. of the French... Oh. Okay, then this is a real confusing turn for their road trip. Yeah. Because I was logicking it before. I was like, oh, well, you know, Lafayette was fighting on the side of the England. And, yeah. and I was like, no, he wasn't. <laughs> well, I suppose in that kind of like Oxbridge kind of way, you're showing up and you're being like, oh, the fighters of freedom and I like... Yeah, I think it's this Enlightenment vibe. Yeah, going being on. like, actually, that was a valid revolution. I, like, I study, my, my dissertation topic is on the Enlightenment and... I think a solid 50% of the sources that my dissertation advice gives me are William Wilberforce speeches. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm not even a British historian. <laughs> I don't this know man, what you're talking this man about. Has breadth. This man. Oh, goodness me. Okay, and there's one more person he met. I took a wild stab in the dark. You'll never guess it. <laughs> <laughs> Go. I love being asked a question where I was like, you will never know. You will never know, but try. Try. Um, pe pe uh, period appropriate. He's, I believe, an Enlightenment thinker. I wouldn't call him a philosopher. Oh. He's also not French. What? Mm -hmm. What was that? <laughs> is it an American? It is an American. Is it John Adams? No. Because he, I would call him a philosopher. Yeah, I don't know then. Who is it? Is it George Washington? No, he's dead. It is Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin oh, Franklin. Yeah. So, squad Paris. trip, these three lads went to Paris, met Benjamin Franklin, Lafayette, Marie Antoinette, and Louis XVI. What a crossover. I know. Well, you imagine, <laughs> like, you know, people go interrailing. Very Not very mm -hmm. often does Macron just do it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we're not rich enough. But then David Cameron did almost get, uh, like, drafted by the KGB. Really? Yeah. So, so... David Cameron went on a gap year, and he gap went year. to Russia. Gap year. He, he went, went to, to Russia. To Russia on his gap I think year. he was going through. I forget the details, but I think he was going through Europe. And because he was like a wealthy, uh, well integrated, well placed, yes. well placed young man, the KGB tried to recruit him. Did they? Succeed? And he had to we leave. We don't know. He had to leave Russia very quickly. Is the story? Maybe they succeeded. Why would you pick David Cameron? Because of all the reasons we just said. Okay, but he's incompetent. Yeah. Yes. 
Bad job. <laughs> Bad job, Katie. Poor Bruce. agent picking. I know. You have Black Widow and you think that <laughs> David Cameron's over here doing no, no. Okay, right. <clears throat> so, road trip aside. So they've been on a road trip. And they're not Wouldn't in. Wouldn't it be so wild? Like, like six to seven years later, oh, at least two of them are dead now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess that's that happens. Yeah, but like, they were not that old. It would have been very weird to be like. You know, I was just in France a couple of years ago. Did you hear they cut the king's head off? Yeah. No, I did not hear that. I met the king. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, wild. I, I'm just confused about why they're going there in the first place. I guess it's there's just not as horizon. much animosity as... No. It's very odd. Like, it's a very odd time for a British person to go to France, I feel. Yes. You've just had the American War of Independence. The Seven Years' War is still fresh in the everyone's Seven mind. Years' War is still going. There's a lot of resentment there. France is about to get real crazy. France, France is about to completely, like, ruin the relationship between them. It's an odd period to be like, Paris? I think the thing, I think the thing is, is that these kind of nationalism stuff very rarely flare up in the very upper classes. I guess. It's that kind of thing of like how the, how Kaiser Bill was the chief of the Apple Stop team. calling them Bill. He was Kaiser Bill. He was Kaiser Bill. Wilhelm. Thank you. <laughs> Please um, don't call him Bill. He was, um, he was vi- like vice chair of the Apple. It's that yeah. thing of like all the European yeah. high ups don't quite well, like They're all family. Yeah. All the, it's all the, Cousin Lee. <laughs> oh, girl. Right. Cousin Lee, where does he live now? He lives in Versailles. <laughs> Oh, he had his head chopped off. Oh, no. Who's Come setting there. Versailles? <laughs> Who did he leave it to? Do I inherit Versailles? No. Okay, right. Next fun fact. So, I think we're skipping a few years now. Mm. What happened to William the Pitt if we... Uh, William, William the Pitt? William, William the Pitt the Pitt's Younger? Die. He doesn't die. What happens to William Pitt the Younger? Rob, this is like pulling teeth. I don't know what happens to William Pitt the Younger. He becomes Prime Minister. Oh, yeah, I know that. Okay, yeah. Sorry, I thought you meant, like, years <laughs> later. No. I know he becomes Prime Minister. like, we're skipping time a bit. He He's now Prime Minister. He acquires Australia. He's the youngest Prime Minister, isn't he? Did David Cameron just pip him? Hey. <laughs> I think he did. I don't know. How I, old was he? 14. Oh, he <laughs> might... Or, or he might have been... David Cameron might have been the youngest Prime Minister since William, William Pitt, Pitt the Younger. Younger. Because, like, young in Prime Minister terms is, like, 35. Yeah. Um, but you so, can't have the job unless you're... You have to be 35, isn't it? Or is that president? No, is it president, president of America that has an age limit? Yeah. So you, you can't don't just elect a 17-year-old. Because like, I, think, I think David Cameron was 31. Yeah. Crazy. Not. That's really young when you think about it. That's yeah. crazy. He was a babby. He had not yet a wrinkle on his face. He has many now. Well, his face sagged. <laughs> his whole face <laughs> dropped. <laughs> anyway. He deserves it. <laughs> is, um, yeah, Prime Minister. Prime Minister. He decides to acquire Australia because the yes. pr- pr- prisons are overloaded. Blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 blah. blah. Controversial things. Controversial blah, blah, things blah, 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 that blah, blah. are happening. And anyway. <laughs> I, think, I suppose uh, his buddy and Grand Tour champion gets into the cabinet. Well, this is the fun fact. Is he not? Is it like he savage? He does not get oh. into the ministerial role. He's never given a ministerial role. Is it because he's too wild? Okay, so there's two reasons. <laughs> the first one is that... They saw each other naked on the Will Grand Tour and they never Tom. recovered. <laughs> Wilberforce, since he came to Parliament, right, was an independent. Yes. And I believe Pitt was a Tory. Now, it's a Tory, not a Conservative at this point in time. Very different. Tory and Whigs. Because we didn't have... If, you're, if you aren't... If you haven't ever studied... British politics. Uh, Don't. I mean, so now we sort of have it's Labour versus Conservatives, yes, right? Yes, the Labour Party the doesn't appear until... We're the... not a two-party system, but it's sort of like America in that the two biggest ones just kind of railroad everyone else. Yeah. Well, uh, they didn't come around until quite recently. Labour wasn't invented until the early 20th century. It was 1901, I think it was. Yeah. Sid- what, Sydney? Sydney something? No. I think they might have been the Sydneys, uh, but I forget. Anyway... Um, but before that, you had liberals and conservatives, and then before that, you had Tories and Whigs, and Tories yes. and Whigs are the OGs. Well, Tor- Tories was, were effectively monarchists, and Whigs yeah. were parliamentarians, Yeah, because of a civil war. Yes. And uh, Wilberforce was an independent. Yes. And Pitt which was you could Tory. be at that time. Which is so nice. they were like, maybe that he didn't want to give up his independence? Maybe. To sit in parliament? Um well, to sit in the cabinet. That's boring. What is the other option? <laughs> so the other option is that it might be because he was always late. 
always disorganized and had bad eyesight sometimes, which meant he couldn't read things. <laughs> like, that might be the reason, too. <laughs> I love the idea. Chronic eye pain, I think. I love the idea of William Pitt coming up to him and being like, right, <laughs> I would make you a minister, but you're blind and an idiot, so I can't. <laughs> you're just kind of incompetent. <laughs> Apparently, he was one of the wittiest men anyone has ever met, though. I That's think among Madame de Stahl. No, Madame de Stahl, who's like a famous... I think she's a philosopher. Might have been a poet. A uh, French lady. Uh, she um, she described him as the wittiest man she ever knew. That's sweet. And he was considered one of the, like, the high... What are they called? The bright sparks of, like, Cambridge yeah. society. Um, that's why he was such a good orator. People Seems used to funny. listen to his speeches. Um, and apparently people used to come for miles to hear him sing. Aww. Very, very talented young very man. So it's not that he's not a very charming. And They do say one of his fatal flaws, though, is that he believed in people too much. So when they, the Home Secretary said, yeah, we'll abolish slavery gradually, he was like, <laughs> oh, cool. Brilliant. Done Great. Because apparently you. he had this absolute faith that the people in power, sh- because he's an evangelist, evangelist sorry, yeah. and he believes that... Um, the parliament is God-given. He's got divine right of the parliament. Basically, he's like, well, the people in power were put there by God, so he must know what they're doing. And so he's like, oh, I'm sure the Home Secretary is doing the right thing, because why wouldn't he do the right thing? Because he God put, put him God. there. Yeah. Uh, and it's like this sort of naive little... Very sweet. Very sweet. But very funny. But misplaced. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> but yeah, uh, so that's why he wasn't a, an MP. But he was an MP. He wasn't. A oh yeah, sorry. That's why he wasn't a, a minister. I'd be so mad. That's a bit like me saying, "Rob, Rob." Well, it is a bit where I'm like, "Yeah, you can set up the the radio thing," and I'm like, "You can't. You don't know what you're doing." <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not like that. It's like if you. If it's I'm... like if, if it's like if you made, if you became prime minister. Mm-hmm. And all of your friends were MPs, <laughs> and you made all of them a, a member of the cabinet, apart from one, who you singled out and was like, no, you're an idiot. And that's <laughs> Not that he's an idiot, he's very smart, it's that he's incompetent. <laughs> it's like, it's like it, it, clearly he had some kind of ADHD, something going on, <laughs> he's like, he can't, he can't be on time. I'm diagnosing William Wilford. I'm diagnosing William Wilford. <laughs> uh, anyway, right, <clears throat> next fact. Hit me. Apparently, Wilberforce wasn't very interested in women for a long time. No, not gay. Not gay. I see that. I see the lowering of the glasses. But I'm here to say, probably not gay. William Wilberforce is a canon bisexual. (laughs) Stop. (laughs) Stop. So, not very interested in women. Doesn't really give them much thought. And then one of his friends, I forget which one, please don't ask me. Lafayette. (laughs) Yes, Lafayette. (laughs) No. Um, One of his friends says... You should meet this girl I know. Her name's Barbara Spooner. Amazing That's name. That's a terrible name. We're like you should, you should meet her. I think, I think you'd like her. I think you'd hit it off. And you know, he's like, eh, okay, yes, I, I guess. guess. And you know, that didn't work out well for Isaac Newton when someone tried to do that. He yeah. had a big fit in his floppy pants and cried. Uh, but Barbara Ann Spooner is introduced to William Wilberforce, and our boy, our boy Bill. Just loses it. <laughs> and is like, I adore this woman. I love her. She's perfect. Guess how long it took them to get proposed? A year. Lower. Nine months. Six, Lower. Six months. Lower. What? Go, Kike. Three months. Lower. A month. Lower. I'm genuinely concerned for Bill. <laughs> <laughs> Three weeks. Lower. Two weeks. Lower. A week. Was it that One day? One day above. What? <laughs> eight <laughs> days. Eight days. <laughs> and then eight days to get engaged. When do you think they got married? <laughs> I'm processing. <laughs> that is the average length of a Tinder hookup. Yeah. That's like, I'll see you one day and then see you again next week. And now we're married. He is moving as fast as the gays. <laughs> he be he not is gay. moving as fast as the gays. Um... Is it, well, no, is it, did he manage to, is it because he's an MP and very rich, did he manage to squeeze into Westminster Abbey? 
I don't know. He got married in Bath, I believe. No, that's a shame. Uh, uh, Emma, Emma guessed it, she says. What? No, I say she guessed a week. No. Nah. <laughs> um, but no, guess when he got married. Go on. Wait, so he was engaged he's after... He was engaged after eight days. He got married after... Well, longer then, like a month. A month. A month. Much to the chagrin of his family and friends who were like, please, oh my God. slow down. <laughs> However, oh my God. What? They... For this woman, what? Because he's very rich. Yeah. What a hit and run. But oh. also, he's very charming, witty, considered one of the loveliest people in society. He's genuinely he perfect. the catch <laughs> that you can possibly get. And to this woman's month. like, well, get me that. Apparently, she was also very lovely, though. And they were very desperately in love. Very lovely. <laughs> they, they, like, legit adored each other. And he was supposed to be an incredibly loving husband. I think she was a lesbian, and they had that kind Stop. of... Stop! <laughs> no, okay, babes, guess how many children they had. Oh, no. Um, well, okay, it's the past. It's so, the like, past. Six. 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 Guess how long it took them. <laughs> to have no, six eight children. Eight minutes. <laughs> eight minutes. Um, but the thing. Well, eight, 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 uh, ten years. Fewer than ten years. That's what they said. That Fewer is, than ten years. So I'd is. imagine nine years and some some months. She was just always pregnant. Yeah, she was just pretty much. Do you not remember pregnant. in that Amazing Grace movie she was always pregnant? <laughs> I assumed that was lazy writing. No, no, she was always pregnant. <laughs> it's just a different child each yeah. time. So. I don't think she was a lesbian. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> fair enough. That's how she locked though. him in a month. I'm just saying. Yeah, <laughs> yep, yep. It's pretty, it's pretty... That's crazy. It's pretty wild. That's but insane. they absolutely adored each other, which I think is real sweet. And a friend who's a really loving father as well. He spent a lot of time Aww. with him. He's real pure. We don't usually get pure people on this podcast. <laughs> there are very few in the past. Yeah, they're... Well, I think the people who become famous are very rarely Yeah, because they pure. get, you know, you can't be <laughs> you rich. You get corrupted. Yeah, well, not even you get corrupted. You don't tend to climb that high upper power level by being mm. lovely. He was lucky by already being there. That's he the did thing. not have to climb. You inherited a very yeah. low amount of wealth and could just be lovely. Yeah. Hang out with his evangelist aunt and uncle. Yeah. So he did have that evangelist so conversion. he had six children and an adoring wife mm -hmm. and decided this is not enough for me, I shall end slavery. Yeah. And then die. But you, do you know why he ended slavery? Because he disliked slavery. No. Do you know well, what, yes. what, <laughs> what drove him to do it? Because um, he'd met with people before. He'd met, he'd seen the slave ships. Yeah. Uh, which, if you've never seen the plans of the slave ships, they're oh, they're horrifying. They're horrifying, and they're the things that, like, they're one of the main things that were showed to the public mm. and like horrified them. Um, so look those up if you want. But like he, he'd seen that, he'd spoken to the like people in charge of the abolishment of slavery movement. I'm not sure if it was official yet. He he didn't join the Society for the Abolishment of Slavery when it was initially. Oh, but really? He informally supported it, but he, he wasn't, yeah. Um, so then... So what turned him round? Well, so what do we know about him? Because obviously if you've seen Amazing Grace, you know that he talked with people like Alaudo Equiano, who's the... Uh... Stop! <laughs> you know Alaudo Equiano. Yes, from, yeah. only from that movie, I think, is the... Oh, we, we had to learn about that. Yeah. So an ex-slave who... Got his freedom, um, and then became a member of the British Society. Mm. There are a few, and yeah, it was a big movement in the abolishment. There was another I've forgotten his name, but a lot of is the one I remember. Um, so, what do you think? What major life change? He's been a party boy and then a very loving husband, but mm. <laughs> so party boy. Six children. Is it he needs to get out of the house? Is it he's realised he has six children now and doesn't no, want to be at home? What do you think would drive him to put his full support behind the abolishment of slavery? Um, what happens to people? Did he have a midlife crisis? He did, but what did that um, bring forth in him? <laughs> I don't know. Go on. He had the evangelical conversion. Ah, uh, right. He became a religious yeah, boy. A I was religious worried he was going to buy the equivalent of like a Ferrari back then and it turned out to be a slave ship. No. And he was like, this is awful. And no. <laughs> <laughs> so he decided, like, it was, uh, you know, all God's children and all that. Yes. Which is not the perspective that, obviously, the Anglican Church took at the time. No. But which, the Anglican you know, Church was busy justifying slavery. It's just yeah. <laughs> the Anglican Church was busy investing in slave ships. Um, but because he was a, it's called nonconformist, I believe. Yeah. Um, he believed that 
that all men were God's children. I'm really like hugging this you're microphone. You're quite you're clutching the microphone. Like a gentle. <laughs> it's quite funny. Um, but yeah, so that's what well, drove that's him nice. to do it. Good that's boy. Fine. He died, uh, I think, the same. I think three months it was, after it happened. I think it's less. I think it, I thought it was days. Might have been three days. Hang on, let me have a look. Da da da. I'm confused. Okay, well, so it was initially abolished 1807. Yeah. The yeah, I think there's. It, that's that's the one on the coins. Yeah, the yeah. Two pound, I think if the you trade did, was abolished yeah. in eighty in oh seven. Yeah, and then that's the, it. And slavery only of slave, yeah, okay. was thirty three. So, 33, that makes sense, because that's when he died, 33. Yes. Because I was like, wait. <laughs> so if you don't live in Britain, we have these two-pound coins, uh, which were made in 2007, I believe, um, to celebrate 200 years of the abolishment of slavery, and they have 1807 written on them, the slave trade, not yeah. slavery, the abolishment of the slave trade. And it has, like, chains instead of a zero. Yeah, they're pretty, pretty funky. Easy. Doesn't really make up for it, but they're pretty funny. No. <laughs> it, was very weird. it was a very interesting period of time, though, because you've got yeah. like the whole British Navy patrolling that whole bit of the ocean mm. trying to catch slave ships. Oh, you know about uh, bloody France? So they reinstate it. Oh yes, under Napoleon, <laughs> the only country yeah. to do that. The only, the only empire ever to, to come to its senses it. and then change its mind. It's well, <laughs> it's because they had a regime change, and Napoleon yeah. was like, hmm. "Do you know what would be profitable?" <laughs> And it really didn't work for them because they reinstated slavery and then all the colonies just Yes, you could, have held, you could have held on to a couple of those. Yeah, no, 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 no. Sander Bang, no Haiti, go on. <laughs> um, okay. So how many days after it was? Was it three days afterwards or three oh, months for afterwards? Flippity gibbet's sake, Robert. I need to know, it's important. Ah, okay. <laughs> Don't mind me. I'm just too just look, me. Just looking some stuff up. Because if it's three days, that's impressive. Uh, yeah, he died just three days after hearing the passage of the Act through Parliament was assured. So this man, this man who marries mm -hmm. a woman within eight days and has six children in ten years, yes. is the fastest man <laughs> in the world. Decides that his life work is done, and that's it. Yeah, he. he Thanks, guys. Like, where's he buried? Do you know? Oh, he's in Westminster Abbey. He is. He is. Close to who? Who's his bro? Oh, Pitt the Younger. Yeah. Because oh, he, he wanted to be married. Uh, married. Wants to be married to Pitt the Younger. He wanted to be buried. I think it's Bath. Let me just check. Uh, what well, the nation said no. <laughs> yeah, he requ ah, he requested to be buried with his sister and daughter at Stoke Newington. Oh. Uh, but then the Houses of Parliament. Well, like, are you, are you sure to his family that you wouldn't, he wouldn't like to be buried in Westminster Abbey? And they were like, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> That's dope! And so he's, he's in there with something but the younger. I have a question for you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's more a question of general history, just because yeah. we brought up Westminster okay, Abbey. Okay. When did we stop burying people in Westminster Abbey when we liked them? I mean, we still do. We don't really. Who was the last one who got buried in Westminster Abbey? I think, I think it stopped being... I think now it's more culturally important to be buried with your family. I don't know about that. I think Churchill is buried. Is he in Westminster or is he I buried with his family? I would have thought Churchill was the last person who I would have thought would have gone to Westminster Abbey. Well, then you have to be Churchill level. Name someone who's been Churchill level since Churchill. But that's what I'm saying. Is that, is that we don't really have those kind of people anymore. Well, no, it's probably for the best. He's not. He's in Bladden. Well, there you go. Who was the last person buried in? Oh, well, it was going to be George VI, isn't it? Why am well, I yeah. asking this question? That's dumb. <laughs> Maybe they just found that space. That happened in Shakespeare Abbey. You're not allowed to be buried in Shakespeare Abbey anymore. You have what, to be cremated. Yeah. George II. Mm. George II? George II, really. That's a long time ago. A long time ago. That's before Wilberforce. That doesn't make sense. That's wrong. <laughs> You're wrong. <laughs> Maybe that's in royal tombs. I don't know. Who's the last person buried in Westminster Abbey? It can't be George II. That doesn't make sense. He won't. Because wait, Wilberforce was around with George III <laughs> and George IV. That's an issue. Well, yeah, Wilberforce was, for, Wilberforce was victorious. Yeah. Hang on a minute. No, was it? Yeah. 33, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. She just yeah. came in. She just, he, Victoria came in and he was like, perfect. <laughs> yeah, I die now. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah, the royals get buried somewhere else now. Sandringham. St. George's Chapel. Is that the one in Windsor? Probably. Burials and memorials in Westminster. 
Well, that's the, the life the aim, lads. <laughs> Do something. George the second of Great Britain is wife Caroline. Must seem to be the last monarch buried there. Okay, who's the last person buried there? Is it Wilberforce? <laughs> <laughs> that would be crazy. That would be wild. Oysters. I don't know. There's no dates on any of them. I deserve to be buried. <laughs> oh, there we go. Hang on a minute. Who is it? Because Wellington and, and Nelson are at St. Paul's. Yes. Well, because Nelson is in... Oh, 1988. 2012. Who is it? Who is so it? The Duchess of Northumberland was buried... Who is she? St. Nicholas's Chapel. She doesn't deserve it. <laughs> Who is she? That, she was buried in 2012. Well, hmm. Okay, who's the last important person? George Villiers! <laughs> That's James' first boyfriend. Oh, James' nice. first boyfriend's in it. Okay, but that's not the last... I it give up just on interesting. You. I give okay, up Elizabeth on you. Diane Percy. That's funny. That's, that's funny, because Charles II had an affair with Barbara Villiers, who I assume must it's be related. related. <laughs> it was one family swindling the nice. monarchs. Only the Stuarts, though. She served the Civil Nursing Reserve and the Women's Royal Naval Service. Who? During the, the Second World War. This woman who The Northumberland buried, lady. Yes. I mean, okay, fair then, play to then her. She became the Duchess of Northumberland. Fair play to her. I'm just saying, I don't think she's the same level as Churchill. Oh, and I don't think that's rude to <laughs> me to say. You've got to have a strict rule about who gets in. You can't be letting anyone in. <laughs> if you just apply early enough. Do you know, I heard once, and I have no idea if it's true, I heard once that Shakespeare Abbey, after Westminster Abbey, is the place with the most... Uh, significant historical figures buried in its 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 walls. Who counts as significant historical figures? No idea. Some historian has made a list of everyone. Uh, who is yeah, because there's a lot of like, there's George Duke of Clarence and his wife Isabella Neville. Then you have uh, the Beauchamp. Please don't list all of them. And the dispensers and all that lot. Yeah, they're all in Cheapsbury. Um, the last bit of country. Yeah. Well, it's okay. Um, <laughs> I, I still I still think though that Westminster is far far ahead. Yeah, like <laughs> I think it, that just means it's that, it's that Oxbridge gap of being like we're actually the yeah. third best university. Yeah, but the gap is like this, isn't it? <laughs> we're we're the we're the fourth oldest university, but the gap is huge. Yes, because what it was Oxford Oxford's like the oldest in like a thousand, isn't it? A thousand one hundred eleven hundred eleven hundred, and then Cambridge was then Cambridge twelve or seven, and then UCL eighteen something. Then KCL 1827 or something? Yeah, sounds about right. Harvard 1636. Oh, mum, mm, mm. Emma says, what about the unknown soldier? He was definitely in Westminster Abbey, wasn't he? Yeah. But that was before Lady Duchess of Thingy in 2012. Do you, okay, fun unrelated fact, but fun history fact. Mm. So, you know what the, what's underneath the Arc de Triomphe, Rob? I don't know. I've never, I've never known. The unknown soldier, but the French one. Shelf? The French one. From the from which war? From World War One. I. I know the Arch as well. Yeah. So underneath that, you can go and see the French unknown mm. soldier. Um, and do you know who had him instated there and opened it? No. A man named Maginot. Do you know who what Maginot From is the Maginot famous Maginot for? Line. He yes, <laughs> the man who invented he the Maginot still line. He was around. He fought in World War One and had his knees blown out. Crazy. And so he, he instated the Unknown Soldier and then set up the Maginot Line. Do you know who is in the tomb of the Unknown Soldier for the Vietnam War? No. No one. Empty. Because they found out who it was. Oh, who was it? Because they found out that this particular soldier was killed in a I think it's the Vietnam War, was mm. killed in a helicopter crash and this family came up knowing that their son had been killed in the same helicopter crash and they DNA tested it and it was actually the same guy and his bones were returned. So the tomb is empty. Oh, that, for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> How annoying. The first World War One, though, do you know how they picked it? Oh. Is they got ten um, bodies that mm-hmm. were, I think it was ten, and mm-hmm. that had no, yeah. they had no idea. Mm-hmm. And then a, and then a, like the, the one of the greatest, the higher up generals came along and just picked one around. Yeah, that's what happened in the French as well. They gave them three bodies and mm-hmm. he, I think he picked a private or something. And yeah. He, and Maginot took private, and the private to them and he was like, pick one. And he did. Good idea. Yeah. Yeah. And then he got full military honours. And then the only people that could attend the funeral yeah. were women who had lost uh, their husbands and all their sons in the war. Wow. And it was there was enough of them to fill the funeral. Dark. So. Flipping dark. Deep shit. Okay, last fact. Oh, there's we have another to pick fact. Someone else. 
Uh, it's very silly this one when was Amazing Grace released Amazing <laughs> when was it released Grace go on uh, 18 when was Amazing Grace the movie oh, released I thought you meant the song no oh, I don't know like that might say compose 2004 <laughs> think about it use your big brain use... was it on the is it 2007 it is 2007 yeah <laughs> this whole episode has me been laying things up for Rob to get <laughs> and just he Rob's, just kicks the ball backwards Rob's, and it's just Rob's not far having a good away. morning Rob. right radio show da, 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 da. now we get pick oh we get to pick someone else I hope you enjoyed Wilberforce I think that's been my favourite for a while I enjoyed Wilberforce <laughs> can you tell I like Wilberforce <laughs> and put in the effort go and see the picture of Wilberforce in the National Gallery oh it's good. my favourite it's Gorgeous Emily's favourite portrait in the National in the Port, National Portrait Gallery. He it's 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 unfinished. He it just is, looks It's so, still very nice though. He just looks so nice. nice. He looks His like a nice eyes man. are so kind. Uh number As only generator. rich men can. <laughs> number generator. Someone good. Someone good. Max is a hundred. It's gotta be a woman. Generate. Fifty six. Here we go. Anne Frank. No. <laughs> you do want to do Anne Frank? No, too depressing. <laughs> you know she was a lesbian. Fun fact. That's all the facts we're getting from Anne Frank. <laughs> Fun fact, Anne Frank was a lesbian. Okay, we say no, 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 no to next no, week Anne for Frank. Anne Frank. Especially as we're having Joe, the, the living <laughs> shit post. Really he like can't talk the about Nazis, Anne Frank. Nazis, am I right? Uh, no, that's George Washington. Can't have George Washington. Just Try again, number generator. Okay, it's not a woman. Who have we got? It's the Marquis de Sade. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'll do the Marquis de Sade. Marquis de Sade. I'll do the Marquis de Sade. Yes, oh, when yeah, I'm writing yeah. my dissertation on yeah. Marquis de Sade. Okay, lit. I'm glad we didn't go with Next that. Next week, <laughs> the Marquis de Sade. Go yeah. <laughs> my life. This is going to be wild. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Amazing <laughs> grace. How sweet. The sound that saved a wretch like me. Horrendous. We have to finish this first now. Come on. No. Finish it. I don't know if I know the rest of it. It's just I once was lost, lost but, but now, now I'm found. found. Was blind, blind so. Oh yeah, but but, but now. now.